The psalmist writes, Bless the Lord my soul, and forget none of his benefits. We remember and give thanks for God's many blessings, and sing praise to the King of all creation. Our first reading is from Psalm 119. Teach me, Lord, the meaning of your laws, and I will obey them at all times. Explain your law to me, and I will obey it. I will keep it with all my heart. Keep me obedient to your commandments, because in them I find happiness. Give me the desire to obey your laws rather than to get rich. Keep me from paying attention to what is worthless. Be good to me as you have promised. Keep your promise to me, your servant, the promise you make to those who obey you. Save me from the insults I fear. How wonderful are your judgments. I want to obey your commands. Give me new life, for you are righteous. The second reading is from John. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit. And in this way, you become my disciples. I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, love one another just as I love you. 
The greatest love a person can have for his friends is to give his life for them. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because servants do not know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, kind of fruit that endures. And so the Father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. This then is what I command you, love one another. Amen. I've always challenged the assertion that politics and religion shouldn't mix. I certainly would never agree that religion and party politics should mix. Indeed, partisan politics and religion are not a good mix either. When we get involved in the political sphere, whether locally or nationally, ultimately it's a matter of compromise. We accept certain policies of parties and we might decide that the ones that are of particular importance to us override our qualms about some of the other aspects of that party's political aspirations. And so ultimately, our earthly politics is a compromise, one where we chose the party that gives us what we feel is nearest to our ideals and our ethical outlook. God does not seem to have any such compromise. Here in this passage in John's Gospel, Jesus says, my commandment is this, not his suggestion, not his strongly worded hint. My commandment is this, love one another. And we might end up debating just what that love should look like. But Jesus doesn't want to cloud it with any sense of ambiguity. Love one another is what he says. And so we go into the world to care for our neighbour, whoever that neighbour might be, to offer succour, to offer charity, to offer encouragement and love, no matter who it might be, no matter what judgment we might make otherwise. But a person in need is a person in need. And Jesus says his commandment is to love. He challenged what love should look like. He challenged who should be the recipients of that love. And so we can't second guess it. We can't work out whether he really meant it. We simply follow that commandment to love one another. In our present climate, we are under the difficulties of the coronavirus. And we have a compromise to make. There are times when we need to go out to go shopping, to get medication, to travel to work, to care for those who have to be seen, have to be cared for. And so we compromise our own safety, our own security, perhaps even our own families through that call to love one another. And as time goes on, as days and weeks and now months pass, perhaps we get a little bit fed up. We get that sense that really can we not just get back to normal? And there has been much chat about what normal will look like. A new normal is the phrase that seems to be on everyone's lips at the moment. So what should that new normal look like? Perhaps now more than ever, the church, or at least its people, 
have something to say on this matter. The politics of our day have been not without debate, but they have reached out in different ways to try and help. Perhaps we might not think it's the best way. Perhaps we can think of other ways in which to help. And when we look locally, we see just how much work has been done, how much we have loved one another. We see it in the care of the most vulnerable. Simple acts of going shopping, of a phone call, just to check how we are. Simple acts of love and kindness that reach out to others that we might never have engaged with before. And so as we look to a new normal, perhaps what we really need to be looking at is how we have responded to this current normal or very abnormal situation. We have seen great acts of love and courage. We applaud the work of those on the front line. But we need to carry that love and care and acknowledgement forward through making sure that those that we applaud are cared for in the future, that their work is valued, that they are rewarded and recognised and encouraged and developed. Jesus goes on to say, I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. Last week we were reminded of what the fruit of the Spirit might look like in our current situation. We need to carry those thoughts forward. The fruit that endures is the fruit that is built on God's love. For it is God's love that endures forever. And so as we seek to find what a new normal looks like, we will find it when it is rooted in God rooted in his love, when it recognises sacrifice and devotion, when it recognises skills and talents that care for one another, build up our community, reaches out to those in need and cares for the most vulnerable. This is the fruit that, endu that endures, for it is built on God's love. God is love, the Bible tells us, and where we find love, there we find God. And so in all our acts of love, God is there. And we, as his people, need to acknowledge that, to encourage it, to find ways in which we can support it, find ways in which we can build a society of justice, of mercy, of peace, and of love. For it is God's love and his fruit that endures. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you in prayer because we are your followers, members of your church. We come to you because your teachings are the foundation on which we build our lives. You are the bedrock of our existence. You are the good earth in which we are rooted and from which we grow. We turn to you especially today because at this time of change and crisis we need more than ever the stability and reassurance that come from your word. We need the strength of purpose that we find when we are grounded in you. Lord, even at this upsetting and worrying time, we recognise that there are many good things in our lives and we are so grateful for them. The comfort of our own homes the beauty that we see in our gardens and in the lovely countryside around us, the little moments of joy and pleasure that come to us unexpectedly 
in the course of the day. The love and support of family, friends and neighbours. The courage of those who are working to deliver our essential services. We give thanks for all of that. We remember those who are living through this pandemic without these blessings. Families in war-ravaged cities or refugee camps. Young people, even now, crossing continents to escape from poverty or from repressive regimes. Elderly people in care homes, afraid that they may never see their loved ones again. Such pain, such fear. We pray, Lord, that your spirit of love will move our hearts, keeping us ever mindful of the troubles of others and always ready to look for ways in which we can help. Lord Jesus, we confess that though we claim to be your people, we do not always walk in your ways. We are not always patient or kind. We ignore those who need our help. We blame others when things go wrong, but we find excuses for ourselves. Loving Lord, forgive us. We want to live as you taught us. Remind us every day that we are rooted in you. And let the light of your love shine on us so that we may grow to be our best selves, bearing fruit that will bring joy to all those around us. We pray now in the familiar words of the Lord's Prayer, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen.
May you know the love that God has for you. And may you shape the world around you by that love. And now may the blessings of God, of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you and all whom you love, this day and always. Amen.